I'm Mark Sackford. I'm Zoe Clement. This is Blue Collar Sports Talk Special Edition with Jay Lawrence, Steve Merle of the Florida Steam Rays. Yes, sir. As always, this episode brought to you by FHP Insurance, Auto Home and Life, 928 524 3754 or 3760. Go ahead and give Chris the house for the and let him know that the little boys at Blue Collar said yes. Now it's time to talk some shit with Jay. With Jay. Jay. All right, man. I want to let the people at home know who you are. All right. I'm Jay Lawrence. I am from Cape Coral, Florida, which is southwest Florida by Fort Myers. Um, 46 years old, and I own the Florida Stingrays. I'm talking nice. about. All right, we're gonna jump right into it, man. So, what do you, what, what all does it take to be a CEO of, of the Florida Steel Rays, and what all does, what all does it consist of? Trying to get get a season together, get the guys together, keep the money together, to keep it going. How does all of that work? Well, it's challenging. Uh, fortunately, I have a really good team working with me. Um, I have a general manager this year that we're working with, Audra. We have some new coaches. Uh, Coach Dre, um, we've uh, we've been blessed. We've had really good coaches throughout. Um, the first coach we had, we had him for ten years, and he kind of ran everything on the field, and I run everything kind of in the business side. Uh, but uh, he had to step down and go to take another uh, position at a school, uh, at a prep school, and so he couldn't do it anymore. We had to. Um, kind of, we've been in a transition the last couple of years through new coaches, kind of trying to get our stride and figure out, you know, exactly how everything gets handled. But, you know, it's it's working out well. We got a really really talented squad, um, but it's hard, man. You know, we uh, we're in a smaller city, and there's two other teams right in our city, and we're trying to compete with teams out of like uh, Maple or out of Miami and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, um, we, uh, you know, it's not like there's a lot of, uh, you know, people running around wanting to throw money at what we do because, uh, to be quite honest, the, the level of football that we play a lot of times doesn't get the attention it deserves. I mean, you find a lot of guys, I mean, we've had a lot of guys go to college or uh, go, go on to play pro and college football through our program and uh, go on, you know, they do mentoring stuff in the community and, and things like that. But it's tough, man. Money, you know, it doesn't grow on trees. And every year it's, you know, rubbing pennies together to try to find, you know, your next bus ride and things like that. But uh, over the last couple of, you know, last two years, we've been working this new uh, plan that we've come up with and, uh, you know, investors are actually starting to look at what we're doing and get behind it. Nice. Okay. That's, what, that's what I like to hear. I like to hear. So uh, the next, uh, the next, the next uh, segment we want to kind of run into is uh, something that you gave us to read. We both did the minute you sent us, we both read it. I had a lot of people read it. A lot of people are interested in this book. Um, so go ahead and uh, talk to you or talk to us about the book that you're featured. Wow, it's amazing, man. And to be honest with you, dude, like my story is probably the least uh, interesting story of the people that is actually in there. Um, I was, you know, I, I got to have my story in there because the people who were putting it together actually gave me an award several years ago, the first award called the Pulling Each Other Along Award. And it was, uh, you know, it was awesome. I got to do it in front of, uh, uh, a minor league baseball team here and everything and it was after this uh, disability dream and do camp where the baseball players get with the kids and they do um, uh, they do like a camp sorry my uh, family just came in there in the other room <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> we did it we've had that issue <laughs> yeah, but um, so we uh, you know I'm sorry that I lost my train of thought there um um, so, uh, you know, so I got to be in this book, but man, it is incredible. The stories that are in there, there's like 30, uh, stories, um, people like, um, just off the top of my head, Dave Clark is the main guy. He pitched in the minor leagues for like 15 years off crutches. 
He's like five foot two. He learned how to throw a knuckleball. He's in the minor leagues. He spent time uh, wow. with the major leagues, uh, um, doing uh, like um, doing like uh, um, you know uh, scouting and stuff and coaching. And uh, he actually got to coach with the '84 uh, Olympic team with Tommy Lasorda. Oh wow! Gold medal. So yeah, he's a he is an awesome guy. Really good friend of mine, and they're the ones who actually put the book together. And gave me the award him and um, uh, Doug Kornfeld, who works with him. Uh, but there's also uh, Rocky Blyer. He's played for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. And his story about going through the Vietnam War and being injured. And then, uh, and this is the craziest part, is the forward was written by freaking uh, Terry Bradshaw. Oh, yeah. nice. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I honestly, I... I don't feel worthy, but man, I am just so blessed to be in there. And I, I, and Doug, the guy who I kind of just wrote out. All right, here I'll confess something to you. When I did it, I just wrote out my story. And honestly, like going back and just thinking about all the stuff I've been trying to forget and stuff like that was kind of tough for me. So once I finished and I reread it once, I sent it to him, let him do his author shit on it. Right, right. And then uh, after that, I haven't really read it all the way. I've given it to my dad and make sure the information's correct, but I just haven't gone all. I started reading it several times, but I haven't gotten all the way through it. Gotcha. Well, gotcha. We, we both read it, and we both definitely think you're more than deserving to be on that on that book. The story is incredible. The way you you went from being on the top, then the accident happened, and then now you're the CEO of the Florida Stingrays and everything in between. I don't want to spoil too much. That is for you to talk about. It's your That's story. Right. That's right. We're still looking forward to getting our copy of the book. Yeah, we can't. We can't. We can get hands on that and read it. Awesome. Um, I will, say this. I will say this. Um, you know, just just talking with you and and everything that you're involved in before the interview today, um, truly amazing work again. You know, myself, Joey, Mike Young, and my father, Mike Paxton, and a few a few other people. I'm, I'm forgetting a few other shout outs, guys. Shout to them, love you. Um, but we we uh, we run Saxon projects here in Arizona, and we we try to really. Uh, Give back to the youth, give back to the vets as much as you can. We understand that you're involved in so many things that do that do the same or have the same goals. Can you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, um, that's, I mean, I, I don't, it's not like being the CEO of the Stingrays makes you rich. It yeah. doesn't at all. You yeah. know, everything that we comes goes into the team because it's just, it's expensive to run a football team. So, um, Really, we have run this from the beginning off of sponsorships and donations. And, you know, I mean, you know, our gate, but our gate, usually we, it doesn't even pay for the referees, to be honest with you, a lot of times. Uh, just, you know, different situations. But um, the, um, uh, it's, when we, when we, uh, put the team together in the very beginning I mean it was all just the sponsorships and stuff and then um, as we moved through and we started 10 years ago with uh, this idea um, and I've kind of been developing it over the last 10 years about um, wanting to turn this into something more something um, uh, you know kind of something that would rival like college football um, and we Kind of put together a plan. We're working with an equity crowdfunding website called WeFunder, and um, to put together a campaign so that we can actually sell stock shares and share this with the fans. You know, let them actually not only have a voice in the future of the team, uh, but also a a opportunity to profit off of the success. Um, so I'm sorry if I, I I don't know if I went down a different rabbit hole than you guys were looking for that <laughs> question. Or I, no, no, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. That, was, that was actually what we were going to talk about next is the future plans. Um, right. Are you, are, so you said you're going to rival, you're, there's something to eventually rival college football. Um, I think everybody wants that. Everybody needs that. Nobody loves the way college football teams play. 
Yeah. So uh, I'm a big fan of the XFL, the, uh, Canadian Football League, stuff like that. So that's why I have huge respect for what you're doing. I, I really hope to do that. So uh, if you could. I actually, you know what, guys? I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I, with the background noise over here, I keep kind of losing my train of thought. But you guys had actually asked about our outreach stuff. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay. When we started, like I said, it was all just donations and stuff, but like, our coach that we had, uh, Chris Moran, he's also my partner in the company. Um, he has always been really dedicated to um, uh, like outreach and doing things with the kids. Like we started this before we even had a team on the field. Uh, we started doing um, uh, free youth football camps. Actually, uh, I, I mean, you guys will probably know Sammy Watkins. Yeah, yeah. He yep. was actually at our very. He was actually at our very first youth football camp that we did he was about to go to college and then we had one of his brothers that played for us for a couple of years nice. wow. so, crazy. but that that's how we really started and then um coach morant um he started a youth football program with our police here in the city the police athletic league um and he um they've done that for the last i think they're going on their fourth season um We've had uh, we do a monthly uh, foster child outreach, um, where we actually COVID screwed that up a lot in the last you know, but uh, each month we either um, get our players to go somewhere or we just kind of uh, we support a group of foster kids that and we take them out to like uh, we took them to Bush, they took them to Bush Gardens this uh, summer we do um um just like go to the beach or just to get them out and show them that, you know, there's people that care. And that's actually a partnership. Uh, my church does a lot of the work with that. They like fund it a lot and everything like that, but we, you know, help what we can. Um, our, our part is more trying to get the players involved with the kids. You know, that's kind of what we want to do. Like, yeah, we want our players to become better football players, but we also want them to, uh, you know, to help them become better men, mentors in the community, stuff like that. That's awesome. That's amazing. Really cool. And like, and you know, we, we, we touched on it a little bit on the phone, but like you said, the, the look on a child's face when you get to meet somebody at that level, you truly can't beat that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, you know, like, like when we do our school programs and stuff, Football players come, they don't care that they're not in the NFL or whatever. These guys, you know, they're football players and the, these are guys that the kids can look up to. Then they can come to our game. They can meet the players, you know, at the games and stuff like that. And um, we got a lot of guys, we've had several guys that are really, really um, excited to help with kids, especially. That's, you know, in this day and age, man, there are way too many kids that don't have positive real, male role models in their life. And you know, you can't fill every hole, but you can do what you can, you know. Absolutely. Right. Well, uh, um, back to back to the Florida Stingrays asking. We appreciate everything you do for those kids. Uh, and this is growing in it. So not only are you helping them get that role model, get this, get some kids, uh, you know, show them positive, positive reinforcement of this, but you also show them how to win. Now you're the three-time South Conference champ, three-time Southwest Division champ, and the one-time United Cup champ. So, what? How did you feel seeing the look on those kids' face or young adults' face becoming champs? What did that mean? To you? I'll tell you, there were several guys on that team that had never won a championship before in sport. Um, I've been fortunate. I have, you know several times you know when i was younger or whatever but we had a lot of guys and man you know they i don't know what's a better i don't know what's more exciting to them the look on their face when they win the game or when they get that ring right right we had you know they you know they they put in to get you know uh uh up you know we put all the money that we won from winning the championship into the rings and then the guys put in their own money because they wanted to upgrade them, and they were pretty sweet, man. We got some pictures of them on our on our website and stuff. There, nice. The guys they picked nice. out some really sweet uh, rings, and you know it's, you know we've had 
uh, what, 11 seasons now. We've made the playoffs 10 times. You know, like you said, the, the championship, we went undefeated that year, actually. Nice. Which wow. Was just wow. huge. Yeah. And, I mean, we have Southwest Florida, man, there's something in the water. There are a lot of talented football players here because, you know, just to be able to compete in the league that we compete in, plus we're competing with players from two other teams that, you know, the, the, when you're a smaller city, you know, trying to recruit players, you know, when you spread them out between three, three teams, it's tough, especially finding the big bodies, the guys that want to push people around. And stuff. Yeah, right, 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 right. You did so, that so said, you kind of walk us through the recruit system, how you guys get your players, how you entice them. Man, honestly, we do like, I was just today, the guy who came to freaking clean my pool. I'm like, hey, man, you play football? <laughs> you know, I mean, we recruit from everywhere. Like, we have our coach, uh, our former coach, uh, Coach Morant, he gets lists of guys. Um, you just uh, put the word out in social media that you're looking for players. Coaches are, you know, always recruiting. Players are recruiting their buddies and, you know, recruiting guys that are looking for opportunities. Um, calling the Calling the high schools. And, um, you know, looking for guys that are not getting the looks they deserve to go to college and maybe they can come and, you know, get a little bit more experience or whatever they need and, you know, make something out of it. We get a lot of guys that are just love the game and wanting to, you know, keep playing, but we get a lot of guys that are really looking, they want a contract to go, even if it's a small arena league, they want to go play football and get paid to do it. Oh, definitely. Amazing. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, just a quick side note, uh, one, one of the first things I noticed when I was going through Instagram with the team, who designed those jerseys? Was that you? Because if that was you, we had a future in design. <laughs> to be honest. Which one? The, uh, the yellow shoulder pads with the, the bolt kind of zigzag. Oh, yeah. I actually, I actually did design those last year. Uh oh, well, NFL needs to hire you. That's some clean jersey. Those are <laughs> thanks. Yeah, we thought they were pretty sweet too. We got a this year, we're actually playing at a, a really nice field here, uh, Bishop Borough High School. So we got our uniforms to match the field there. They're gold and black. So we put all black with yellow. And then we have the Stingray Signia and a uh, uh, American flag on it. Nice. So we did just get a question from a viewer. Um, he asked, Mark asked, what are the ages in his team? So what's your age group? Uh, 18, they got to be 18 and up. Most guys are really between the ages of 18 and like 25, 26. Uh, we got a couple of guys that are pushing 30 and we got uh, maybe one guy that's even actually like my age, he's like 45. Nice. He's going to be like a player coach, you know. So. Right. Former police officer from New York. Okay. Nice, there you go. So, there you go. There you go. So I think he's trying to get a spot on the team because now he's asking how many players on the roster for the team. Uh, we can have as many as we want, actually. We don't have enough, so if you want to come out, you know. There it is, Mark. And Mark, you can come on out. We are, we are in Florida now, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got two tight ends right here. That's right. <laughs> awesome. That's right. You guys look like you can push some guys around for us. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> As long as, as long as we get to have a celebration, how, how do you feel on celebrating your a big play, a touchdown, all that good stuff? How does that go in the league? Uh, I mean, honestly, you got to kind of make sure, you know, our league keeps things under wraps a little bit because, you know, there's, you know, these guys aren't worried about losing checks. So you got to make sure, you know, guys aren't, you know, in each other's face too much. But, right. um. I don't know. They do, you know, little dance and stuff like that. There we go. Little wiggle room. 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 Little wiggle
is there, is there a game plan that you can tell the folks at home, maybe a way that, you know, anybody can get getting help or maybe if somebody's listening, um, you know, if they have someone that can help, what to tell them? Yeah, honestly, guys, it's simple, very simple plan. Um, the idea is to have 51% owned by, like, the guys who put in the bigger money to get things started. Um, and the, the 49% of the team, we can sell as stock shares. You, you list the, you, what we're doing is we're creating a campaign on WeFund or the equity crowdfunding campaign, and they only accept 3% of the submissions they receive. So what you do is you can put up the, um, the campaign, and when people buy, they're buying IPOs, which turn into stocks once the campaign goes live, once the campaign goes uh, is finished. And then they put together the paperwork and you go on the stock market, you know, you, uh, you know, from there you go on the stock market and it, the price is whatever it is. But the idea is uh, the first thing we're trying to do is we're trying to sell 5,000 stock share packages. Each share package is hundred dollars each and comes with 50 shares of stock. So shared shares of stock are $2 a piece just for this first buy. Because the idea is, and, and we were working with Leaf Funder, they've actually approved to go through with this. Once we do our team, next we're going to launch a league and ten other, uh, nine other teams the exact same way, except instead of going for 5,000 share packages, we'll go for 50,000 share packages at $100 a piece, which would be a million, uh, $5 million. Nice. Wow. Nice. That's a good plan. Um, so when we're looking at it, how many teams do you have in your uh, conference or in the division or the entire? Um, in, in the FFA, the, uh, uh, um, what the heck is it? Football Federation of America uh, 2.0, we have, uh, I think there's 22 teams. And there's other leagues in Florida too. It's just the FFA is easily the best league. I mean, the other leagues you got, you're wondering if they're even going to play each week, you know? Mm, gotcha, gotcha. So before we, we backtrack, I just I came up with something. So uh, uh, what's the team that gives you the most picks? Or if you don't want to answer that because I get that, what team do you give the most picks? Because one undefeated, you got to give a lot of picks. Does this kind of resume, you know, a lot of people might not want to be lined up against the steam rays every time. Um, in the past, we've had some pretty good rivalries. Um, we were with the rivalries with the Hollywood Browns, and then they shut down operations. And or the Hollywood, uh, the Miami, uh, what was it, Dade County Cowboys? They're no longer a team. There was this uh, West Coast Soldiers. We had a little rivalry with for a couple years. They're the ones we beat to win the uh, go undefeated for the championship. Um, but they're not playing anymore either. They shut down this season. Uh, but I'll tell you what, our first game this year, we're actually in a new conference. And our first game is against the uh, Bradenton Gladiators, who have won the championship the last couple of seasons. Nice. So, yeah. And that's on the, the 22nd, correct? Yes, sir, on the road. Yeah, we played them a long time ago, but, you know, it was different back then. Is there a way we can watch that live? Yeah, actually, I'm having a meeting on Monday with our school that we're working with, and I'm going to see, uh, we're working with their guys that do their games live on YouTube, so yeah, I'm going to find out the details about doing that, and we're going to definitely 100% try to get it done, I mean, it's budget, man, you know, it depends on the budget, but, you know. You, you, uh, you let us know, and we'll go ahead, and uh, we'll, we'll share it on our site. Awesome, yes, that'd be great. You got fans here in Utah. So kind of kind of backtrack a little bit. Are there are there scouts that show up to the games? Do, do these players get to showcase their talent? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, so the, the players is there is there scouts that show up to these players? Do they get to showcase their talent in it? Yeah, we'll tr um uh, we will have scouts that will come to the t games from time to time. Um, we also, uh, guys, get their own film together. 
And, uh, you know, because we have we get good game film and we get the game film so that they can, uh, you know, kind of promote themselves a lot. Coach, our one coach does a lot as well. Um, our former coach, Morant, uh, would do a lot to help the guys get recruited. Check this out. We had one guy. He was a Marine. Got out of the Marines, came to play for us. Played two seasons. His second season was our championship season. He had nine sacks in the championship game and got himself a contract to go play football in Europe for a couple of years. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's real chance here. Yeah. We had another guy that played several years in South America. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice. I'm going to have to showcase the tight end ability. Uh, <laughs> I, I could throw a few blocks. I could catch. And one good Bronx fight game. <laughs> and that's all I'm asking. Nice, man. Maybe we'll get you playing in Mexico or something. Yeah, there it is. There it is. So, kind of go back to the one more time. Yeah, one more time. We do have questions for them. We're we'll trying to hit some of those as well as some of ours. Um, if if they were if anyone was interested in buying a stock, where would they go and how would they purchase it? Uh, if you go, if the the campaign is still being created. It's not perfected yet, but it's got the basic, you know, what we're doing. Uh, just trying to get the wording right, you know, everything like that. But if you go to WeFunder, W-E Funder, F-U-N-D-E-R dot com slash Stingrays. Okay. Or you can go to our website, FloridaStingraysFootball.com. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. We'll include both of those in the video. I'm nice here to do that for you. Absolutely. Is there just wondering? Is there a way to get a hold of these jerseys? Like fan, like uh, yeah, we could, this one online. Yeah, yeah, we could. We can order it. We're actually ordering our uniforms right now. Um, they're uh, uh, like fifty dollars, fifty-five dollars, or something like that. I think whatever. Not bad. That's not bad. That's not, bad. not bad. Yeah, it's you know you gotta you get. We try to keep it around about 40 to 45 guys just because we don't want, you know, guys whining about not playing. And it's like the coach is going to play the guys who's going to help him win. Right, exactly. So if you're not playing, you're not doing something, show them. Right. Well, you let us know as soon as you're able to, as soon as we're able to buy those jerseys online. Because, uh, I, okay. really, I really love those uh, yellow, those yellow shoulders. have something about them just catching my eye. Oh, actually, those? I got some of those. I could probably say, I got some of those from last year. Those are last year's jerseys. So I could probably, let me, I'll, let me know your sizes. I'll see if I can dig some out. Oh, man, amazing. Hey, we love that. <laughs> we can't wait. We can't wait. <laughs> Super cool. Um, so I kind of, kind of just, uh, so before we wrap it up here, we, we would like to know, like, what's your, what's your favorite memory or story being a CEO of this team? But, you know, whether whether it's something funny, some serious, you know, what was that one moment you'll never forget? Man, there's been a lot, man. It's, 11 years. I'll tell you, I got to say, honestly, that one of the biggest things is, you know, just like being uh, the, the former head coach, I mean, being the, the new head coach or brothers too, he's been with us for seven years, but me and, and, this for, and the former head coach are like, and my partner, Chris, we've... There is just so many things like we've had to do to get this thing done. You know, there's, I mean, oh my gosh. But honestly, if I had to say one thing, it would have to be when we won the championship, of course. I mean, as far as just straight up what the team goes, I mean, we were, everything just gelled that year. I mean, it was really the whole season and going undefeated and getting to the end and like i mean i was actually like 10 minutes late to the game and we were up like 17 to nothing or 21 to nothing or something wow. I was like, oh, no, no, no. yeah we ended up blowing them out it was just it was awesome so uh that was probably the the biggest you know highlight of that and the crazy thing like i mean i'm not really i don't wear like you know i don't wear jewelry or whatever but 
like, you know, we got all the uh, the rings and, you know, for the team. And like, I didn't even like order myself one. You know, it was like, I mean, the team really couldn't afford it anyway. And so like, I didn't even get myself a ring. It was just the memories enough for me. That's, you know, you know what I mean? I don't need the right, right. right, makes sense. So uh, before we go ahead and wrap this up, we're, this is the beginning of the season. Um, if it's all right with you, we definitely love to have a follow-up interview, midway, partway, wherever way, but definitely a follow-up interview, seeing how the season goes, when you repeat as champions, we like to, we like to be there for that interview, all that good stuff. So if there be a blue collar, we can back up with four or two days. Awesome, man. Hey, I, anytime you guys want me or anybody from the team, we got a lot of characters. If you guys want to talk to anybody, that'd be great. We'd love it. Love We'd it. love that. We'd love that. We'd absolutely love yeah. it. We'll, we'll talk with not only the CEO, the coaches, the players, yeah. anybody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we'll, we'll keep our fans here at home up to date on the team race. That's right. Awesome, man. And then you guys can help me put together a team out there in Arizona. We love, love that. We love, love that. Let's do, Let's do it. All right, guys. Awesome. And once again, Jay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a good night. Take it easy. Thank you. Thank you.